these days we might feel overwhelmed with everything what is going on in the world and um, media allows us to learn about what is happening in all parts of the world that is good to some extent we may feel connected um, we may realize how interdependent we are and um, we may be able to engage ourselves to have some influence but it also can overwhelm us and we may leave um, we may feel overwhelmed um, helpless stressed anxious even depressed but we are not alone and there are many resources available um, during this challenging time we can do something we can start with ourselves we can be the change we want to see in the world <laughs> mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi was a peacemaker activist spiritual leader he was a great example of such he was convinced that being the change he wanted to see in the world himself is the way to go when i was in india in 1999 i studied for several weeks at the mahatma gandhi peace foundation in delhi and stayed uh, in the countryside nearby mumbai to learn directly from or how mahatma gandhi's mission of nonviolence has been implemented in slums and villages and in schools for adivasis the untouchables besides learning about nonviolence and mahatma gandhi's way of life I also looked for a role model at that time, a wise person who could show me how to live my own life. I had just started university and uh, entered, in my eyes, a big universe, too big for me. I looked for ways to ground myself and uh, to find rescue and especially direction. So listening and reading and experiences in India, I learned that Mahatma Gandhi did not just speak his words, he lived them. He looked for ways to live an ethical life, to live most in line with his moral and spiritual values. I really admired that. Mahatma Gandhi believed in being the change he wished to see in the world. One change he practiced himself was taking on the vow uh, to never consume milk. And he extended it also to milk um, to meat and milk and milk products. He said, I will not take milk, milk products or meat. If not taking these things should mean my death, I feel I would rather face it. He inspired, aspired to be a vegan, but um, he had a la lack of knowledge about vitamin supplements and <laughs> nutritional planning. Um, so he became sick quite sick and um, then he changed slightly his course um, and followed his doctor's advice to take some goat milk what improved his condition but he stayed um, a vegetarian uh, lacto vegetarian so anyway um, this is one just one example uh, you don't have to become vegan of course to change the world but uh, if you have a passion for something like mahatma gandhi um, if something is really important to you and you start with yourself, um, we can be quite influential in the world. Let's take compassion. Let's take our teachers uh, as compassionate examples. A teacher with compassion, um, her or himself will teach directly from experience. A student will have direct experiences themselves. This will leave deep imprints on the minds of the students and inspire them to do the same. So a ripple effect um, of compassion will go out in the world. And this can even save other beings' lives, such as animals. Saving animals' lives will reduce an immense amount of suffering, pain in the world uh, of all those animals, but not just, um, but also the people who slaughter them. I like to share a story by Arjan Pram, a Theravada teacher from Australia, that exemplifies the pain animals and humans feel alike and the power of compassion that transforms one's life completely. The cow that cried. Do you know that? <laughs> Ajahn Pran was leading a meditation class in a low security prison. A person he had never met um, before was waiting to speak with him. He was a giant 
um, of a man with tattooed arms. <laughs> That's, um, and he had scars in his face um, that uh, seemed to come from violence um, in the past. He looked fearsome. Anyway, this guy wanted to speak with Acham Pram about something that happened a few days before that, and that changed his life completely. The jail was a prison farm in Australia where short-term prisoners or long-term prisoners close to release could be um, prepared for life outside, some by learning a trade in the farming industry. Furthermore, the produce from the prison farm would supply um, the surrounding areas and the prisons with inexpensive food, thus keeping down the costs. Australian farms grow cows, sheep, and pigs, not just wheat and vegetables, so that the prison farms. But unlike other farms, this prison had a slaughterhouse. Um, so the inmate described the situation. He was standing with the electric gun by a stainless steel funnel to force cows, pigs, and sheep through it. He said and they um, would always scream, each on its own way, and try to escape. They could smell death, hear death, and feel death. When an animal was alongside his platform, it would be wiggling and moaning in full voice. Even though his gun could kill a large bull with a single high voltage charge, the animal would never stand still enough for him to aim properly. So it was one shot to stun, next shot to kill. One shot to stun, next shot to kill. Animal after animal, day after day. The so one day the inmate had a shaking experience. That day, they needed beef for the prisons around. They were slaughtering cows, one shot to stun, next shot to kill. He was well into a normal day's uh, killing when a cow came up like he had never seen before. This cow was silent. There wasn't even a whimper. It, its head was down as it walked purposely, voluntarily, slowly into the position next to the platform. It did not wriggle or try to escape. Once in position, the cow lifted her head and stared at the, at the executioner, absolutely still. The inmate hadn't seen anything even close to this before. His mind went numb with confusion. He couldn't lift his gun nor could he take his eyes away from the eyes of the cow. The cow was looking right inside him. He slipped into timeless spaces. He couldn't tell Archam Pram how long it took, but as the cow held him in eye contact, he noticed something that shook him even more. Cows have very big eyes. He saw in the left eye of the cow above the lower eyelid water beginning to gather. The amount of water grew and grew until it was too much for the eyelid to hold. It began to tri trickle slowly all the way down her cheek, forming a glistering line of tears. Long, closed doors were opening slowly to his heart. As he looked in disbelief, he saw in the right eye of the cow, above the lower eyelid, more water gathering growing by the moment until it too was more than the eyelid could contain. A second stream of water trickling slowly down her face and the man broke down. The cow was crying. He told me that he threw down his gun, swore to the full extent of his considerably capacity to the prison officers that they could do whatever they liked to him, but that cow isn't dying. He ended um, by telling Acham Pram that he um, became a vegetarian. And the cow uh, that cried taught that man um, who did horrible crimes in his life what it means to have compassion. So no matter where we are on the path, um, everybody can do something to change the world, even by saving, saving one's being life. As Mahatma Gandhi told me, um, the first time in my life, even more than 50 years after his death, um, that there's a meaningful life to live um, through compassion, through nonviolence. Uh, so even a cow's cry can uh, turn a man around um, who is overwhelmed by anger and to fill his heart with compassion. So every day's action matter. 
everything we do matters, everything uh, that is virtuous can have a big, big influence in the world, and we can be the change we want to see in the world.